Hi everyone. Hi everyone. Uh, welcome to Navaboat Moonshine. Although we're, we're, not, in the we're not in the we're not in the <laughs> boat. Um, just a quick shout out uh, to one of our friends of the channel, uh, Neil McNerney. I think Neil's from Canada. Looking we at uh, we think <laughs> I think I'm pretty sure Neil's from Canada. Uh, big contributor with messages and things. So uh, yeah, thanks Neil. What Neil actually did was click the button up somewhere that says buy us a beer so Neil did so cheers Neil we're drinking um, well proper black a black IPA and I'm drinking St. Stalls Stout yeah so uh, these are brewed actually in uh, Cornwall so a, a good English beer even though Cornwall somehow want to be independent as well but uh, yeah cheers Neil thanks very much yeah, we appreciate thank you. it very, very appreciative um, if you want to buy us a beer <laughs> No hard sell. Uh, yeah, so we're going to crack on. Uh, well, Fran's just cooking me a curry, but uh, we're going to start the video off. To to Toasted Neil. Thank you. Less talking, more drinking. And uh, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> uh, we Ooh, best that's get. Nice. Oh, this is nice as well. So we we best get cracking. So shall we go to the boat? We shall. Well, not now, but we, well, we we will. Tomorrow. <laughs> Okay, start to look at some of the electrics, just uh, thinking about powering the boat, charging our batteries while we're away for the winter. Inverted charger, Victron. Uh, this is a 12 volt, self-explanatory, 3000 VA, 120 amp. So what that means is it'll supply pretty much three kilowatt of power uh, when it's on inverter mode and when it's plugged into shore power it will supply that through a bypass and also charge our batteries up to 20 120 amps so a nice piece of kit this is the multi plus two so this is like the the victron next generation ones uh so right let's see if i can get that to fit in there i did have a tape somewhere there it is so it'd be very nice if I can fit that in that gap at 21. Yep, so it will, it will fit in there. So let's, uh, let's just... So yeah, I want to put it here on that board there. That was all my, always my intention and it does, it does fit. So. These come with a, they come with a mounting bracket. And a battery temperature sensor. And being big one, they come with the screws as well. Far too many by the look of it, but hey, I'm not gonna argue. Ah, no, not far too many, because you're actually screwing at the bottom as well, so, no. Right, so let's get this mounted. 
And so you can see the mounting plate sort of here. It's well, not the mounting plate, but that's where it hooks on. That hooks on like that. So you fix this to the wall. I think there's probably another screws then that secure that once it's on. So I want to know that distance to the holes. To the top of the unit. So, okay, four and a quarter. I'm working in. I'm working in Imperial today. <laughs> well, for now. Ah, oh, so that's pretty much a guide, really. So, what's it look like? No spirit level on a boat. Uh, Span those two, I think. Again, bouncing around on trades, different trades for different days. <laughs> Need to go and fetch it actually because my um oh it's not too bad oh well i'll do it the hard way or the old-fashioned way shall we say Not used to hard work. Well, let's get that hooked on there. Uh, these are these are quite heavy, actually. Um, what's that? What's that feel like? Really awkward to get into tight spaces with. You. If you're putting these in an arm's length, you've got twenty kilos plus, maybe. Our multi plus two, and you can see it clears that uh, cable entry there as well. I've said before, uh, batteries are going along the back, the, along the back, bo back eh, eh. <laughs> along the back step, in internal to the boat. Uh, one thing you have to think about if you put batteries inside the boat, sorry, I'm not pointing um, for boat safety. There needs to be an escape route for any hydrogen released. Now that's a bit of confusing. That's a bit confusing for some people. It's like ah, the sealed batteries. Well, there's there's not really any such thing as a sealed battery. 
all sealed batteries just mean um, you don't put tip acid, or well, not acid, you don't tip distilled water in. They're not technically sealed because there's a valve in there and they're, they're VRLAs, valve, valve regulated lead acid, which means under certain circumstances, and certainly when they're new, they can give off a bit of hydrogen uh, or could do uh, when they're being charged. Hydrogen goes bang, we all know that. So for BSS, there needs to be a route to, to the outside world. So I can't put those in a box and seal the box lid. There has to be a route through. So, um, and that's a BSS thing as well. If you cover your batteries with a lid, you have to drill holes in them, at least a hole, to allow um, hydrogen to escape and not sit under that lid and create an explosive atmosphere. All things to think about. So with, with this one, I should make sure there's a route through to the top step where there'll be a vent and then there's vents in the back doors as well. So there's no chance of any hydrogen buildup. Uh, pretty important, it applies to all batteries. Very few of them, if any, I don't know of any, very few of them are actually sealed. Right, I think I'm gonna get those batteries unpacked. Seems a shame to get them dirty really, but yeah, that's the next step, I think. Right, so I, I briefly covered these before. God, they're heavy. <laughs> uh, on a comfortable spot. Right. Uh, lead carbon, they're a gel battery. Uh, fairly new on the scene. I bought these uh, much earlier in the year, actually. Much earlier. Uh, they're not cheap. When I bought these, they were 260 a piece. I think they're about that now. We've got six. Uh, so what's to say about lead acid? Le not lead acid, lead carbon. They are lead acid, but lead, lead carbon. So what you've got, these have a, or should have, a superior uh, lifespan compared to your normal, let's say, chandlery lead acid. Um, their design life is around about 15 years. And where you get... Um, there's a, with batteries, there's a cycle, there's a cycles given by the manufacturer. So how many times, you know, you can, you can start, you can cycle that battery from halfway to fully charged uh, before it starts tapering off. Your normal lead acid battery would be about 30, 300 cycles. So a year's worth, possibly. These are actually around about 3000 cycles. So yet yeah, 10 years plus. And they're not guaranteed for 10 years, of course, but um, their design life is, you know, su superior. So where you might be changing the ordinary lead batteries every few years, uh, even though these are more than twice the price, these should give me four to five times the life. So to me, it makes sense. It, 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 you pay your money, takes your choice. We bought these when we had money. <laughs> we don't anymore. But... Um, yeah, these lead carbon, what is lead carbon? So they're, they're a gel battery. So the acid is lead acid, but the, 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 the electrolyte is in the form of a gel. Um, and the lead part, the, acid, the carbon part is, there's, a, there's a, like a graphene, which is a type of carbon, film on the negative plate. Whoopie do, so what? Um, what that means is they resist uh, sulfation much, much better than a normal battery. So that's what kills most batteries, uh, that they start to sulfate because they're not charged correctly, they're not discharged, well, they're discharged too much. So the batteries, they're almost like a jacket on the negative plates. These have got that carbon film, so they, they don't sulfate up anything, anything like. And they, because of that, they suffer partial charges and deeper discharges better than your average battery. So win-win on a boat, because no, there's very few boats that actually look after their batteries. They, they just can't, especially if you're off-grid. They never charge long enough. Um, and they never go through that proper three-stage charge, or that they might do, but regularly they don't. Especially if you're out continuous cruising. You see people running their engine for an hour or two at night. Those batteries are nowhere near. So uh, we've gone for these. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start to look at housing them, wiring them. 
uh, and, and to the shore power. So my batteries are getting charged uh, through, the, through the inverter that we just hung up. There she is. Or well, he is, I'm not really sure. Are they genderless? I'm not sure. Um, and that'll allow me to put some of the lights on. I don't, I don't want, I've not wanted to connect any 12 volts to the batteries at the moment because without charging them, I, I don't want to do that. So uh, let's get these unpacked. Let's see if the bus bar, and I'll show you, well, I'll show you how I'm going to connect them up. This, I've done this before on a few of these sets that I've installed for the people. We'll get them uh, connected up. Uh, you right down there? Right, um, starting to look at the boxes for the batteries. I've had all the cable. Let's get you up here. Had all the cable arrived today. Uh, still waiting for an isolator. But I've got the cable and fuses and things. Right, this thing here. Um, I'm just trying to use up some of the off cuts of wood I've got. Uh, this is just a base for the batteries to stand on. So the one thing about this is, I've been thinking about it. Um, our central heating pipes will sort of run down that way uh, and need to go out of that hole there so what i'm doing is actually raising the battery tray up about about 50 mil so the pipes can come along and actually go under the battery tray and in um, just one of those things where i'm trying to think two steps ahead because if i don't uh put that if i don't raise that battery tray up then I've got to clip the pipes across the top of there. Which, yeah, okay, I could do that. But it might be neater, I think, if I just put the pipes under there. Just raise those up, 50 mil or so, then come out. If I can get the curve into there, I'd like to try and get the piece all the way through. But I haven't seen how flexible that pipe is yet, so... If not, I'll have to put a couple of elbows there. Right, let's get this sort of latticed out. Screw to the floor. And then I can make cut a piece of ply then to sit on top of there.
Okay, get the idea. Channel all the way along there, the pipes. Just cut some plywood to go on top now. Right, that's got them cut. Um, off cuts, do you remember? Off cuts from the side hatch. So I used two of those, or those two off cuts, to go in there. Not wasting wood where I don't have to. Um, and I'll just now gun that down, I think. This might well be the most over-engineered battery box ever. So I'm doing there, I just drilled one hole in a piece of wood and that allows me to drill lots of holes all the same on all the same line. I've not I've not been over the top and measured the gaps, but hey ho. I do need some screws though, so they're not gonna, they're not quite gonna cut it. I guess the one, well, the one seems to be making life hard, difficult for myself, and I would tend to agree. Uh, but I have got, let me hear again, I've got loads of these off cuts from when I did the gunnels. There was, so I'm trying to make use of them. Uh, and we're not entirely sure but we was burning some some off cuts uh, in the log burner, like in the van. Um, and it seems, yeah, I cleaned this flue yesterday. It seems to have created um, quite a lot of problems with uh, the, the flue in the van. I, I don't know whether it, it is actually because we burned. We burned a few different things, but uh, thermo wood. If anybody's tried burning thermo wood, it burns like crazy. But I think it gives off this, it's like a black, almost almost like a glass tar. Sticks to everything, but it clogged our flue up anyway. So we're, we're sort of blaming the thermo wood, but we're not 100% sure. Okay, so you get the idea. I should cut all these off level in a bit, but um, I think I can make a pretty sturdy battery box there with these. And I guess the a plus is I can always take it apart if I wanted to, so. Well, I'll carry on and see where I end up.
definitely need some new screw bits. Okay, it's coming together. Uh, I've cut all these off now. Uh, these haven't been cut out. I'm just starting to engineer those sides. Still a little bit of movement in there, but once I've tied it all in, should be okay. Uses some wood, so that's fine. So go and buy some more. Well, let's crack on. Okay, it's getting dark now. So there you go, the most over-engineered battery box of all time. <laughs> Probably isn't, but anyway. Looks pretty good. I don't know whether most of this won't be on show, but some of it might be. Fans back. Yeah. Wonders what I've been doing all day. Yeah. <laughs> all day, so making that box. Remember with the gaps underneath. What else have I done? <laughs> I have... Uh, Oh yeah, why the nav lights up? We'll finish that today. That was in a previous video though, but anyway. Uh, cut the cables through to them and put those in. One day. Oh, I want to know what you've been doing all day. Oh, I even think I've been asleep at some point because that, that's, I can't believe how many hours that took me. But hey ho. So yeah, uh, cable gland, 4M4, stainless steel screws. And there's lots and lots of silicon behind them. I don't like doing this at all. But yeah, we're saying uh, you'll find most river authorities most river authorities stipulate you should have running lights on your boat at night or in uh, in adverse conditions. So bad weather and stuff. Yeah, yeah, look fog and stuff. And we've got the seven here. Uh, I don't. Know, the seven does. I'm not sure whether the Avon. We went on the Avon before, and nothing was said, was it? Nothing's ever said. That's the whole point. Nobody really. It's, it's not about, nobody will tell you. Nobody like polices it. Nobody polices, their... where's your running lights, no. But if you look about, quite a lot of boats have got them. The big ones haven't they? Uh, no, yeah, it. it depends who the builder was. Some builders just don't, um, just don't fit them. Of course, we, what we're doing ply lining at the moment, um, I won't be able to get to the back of this after so we're trying to get as many of the drilling done before we put the ply up it might yeah that's it and you just get as much in there as you possibly well as, as you can without going mad To hope that that's uh, got it. That, I don't even see that or not. I guess you can. Yeah. Don't look too close. <laughs> so let's get the. Checking again. Uh, so the yeah, the green one goes on the starboard side. Uh, I think I'll seal that from the back. So I think that's going to be quite difficult to do that. So. Nothing really sophisticated there. Is that it? Uh, well, you, 
you've got the lens and then the shield because this has to point forward and obscure to obscure the light from the back Now even though I'm going to connect that up inside even though I'm going to connect that up inside that 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 cable entry I've put in is big enough to allow me if I ever have to take that off I can pull those connections out so so there's one they look alright once they're on yeah <laughs> they're just um it's not very nice to do keep drilling holes I don't like it and this stuff here swarf. Uh, swarf yeah if you leave one little piece of that on your boat anywhere it goes rusty oh it goes rusty and eats into your paint it's a nightmare fans just you've just been clearing up some bits on the roof mm. haven't you yeah it don't come off very well though no it don't it's, it's, it's almost even if there's a, a swarf dust yeah it just sits there you you can you can, oh it's a nightmare but there's one done and that's the easy one because the other one's hanging over the water. <laughs> that'd be fun. Yeah, yeah, that would be fun. Um, yes, let's have a look at that inside. Well, I just managed to get the other one on. Uh, well, I'm just doing that. Uh, yeah, there's the little insert for the LEDs. Look. Yeah, it's getting dark here, so I need to crack on with this. <clears throat> so I'll just pop this little board in and then I'll show you All right, let's have a look okay so there's how it sits just our LED pointing forward and There's the other one on that side. Right, we're just going to wrap up for today. But Fran needs to do George's doors. Yeah, I haven't done it for a few weeks. I haven't weeks, done it for so. a while. So it, <laughs> not everybody's going to know what George's doors is. So um, she's going to add up, add up the scores on the doors, which is a Bruce Forsyth one, is it? Yeah. Or uh, George Dawes was Vic and Bob. Oh God! So all you all you overseas guys are not going to know what we're on about, boss. <laughs> Fran's going to now add up where we are and our hours and stuff. So over to Fran. Right. You're, so off, you're off fairly there, Fran. Have you? I have got a list. It is getting easy, I think. I, can't I think this was our last total. So, so I get. Hang on. Let let me get a bit lower as well. Nine oh. nine three three hours. Our last. That's the last time we did it. Total. Didn't we? Yeah. So we've got gulper pump. Uh, batteries, leisure batteries, horn, nav lights, the Victron, multi plus, can do it more, more of it, battery cable and crimps, and solar controller. Yep. PPT solar controller. Not, not all of these are actually installed yet, but they are on the boat, and yeah. that's the way we've sort of gone for it. So, have, we? have, have we, as we've bought them on, we've added As they're on these. the boat, you know, either they might not be connected up. There is something we haven't put on, and that's the lights on the boat we need to work oh, yeah, we, i need yeah, to look yeah. at that what that yeah. was we'll add that to the next one we'll add then. that to the next yeah. one so at the moment then we are twelve thousand six hundred and fifty six pounds it's a nice holiday that is it is a nice holiday uh your hours uh we have missed a couple off here i think as well i think there'll so, be a few more than that. as an average you've done 161 at the moment and i've probably done about 96. yeah so so there you have it yeah, so that's where we are. Over 12 and a half grand so far. <laughs> and we know we're near finish it. We said 20. Yeah. We said 20 to fit it I out. I think it'd be more. It we're might, it might be more. Yeah. We said 20. And there's, we're easily over 13 because if we put those lights on that we got from the Trinity Marine, that, that was that was seven or eight hundred quid so yeah. it, we're over 13 we're just not on that we have to put it on there right uh we say cheery boy you look you can be curry are you no you are no you, you are do, you do curry better than me no you don't don't give me that <laughs>
I bought you some beers there. I'll have a beer. <laughs> um, there's two beers over there that have been there all day. Although technically it's a school day, so. You can have one with you, Corey. I'll, oh, okay. Right, we'll say Tetty Boy. Tatty boy. Uh, thanks for all the new subscribers again and current subscribers and all the great comments we're getting. Yeah, it's been fab. Really appreciate that. So uh, we'll see you next time and see where we've got to. So thanks for now and thanks tatty for boy. Bye. See you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.